Titan Avenue serves as a metaphor for uh, Macon's history. Uh, when Macon was first laid out in 1823, they laid it out in nice square blocks with uh, alternating uh, large wide boulevards wider than Le Enfant's uh, Washington DC boulevards. Savannah has its squares, Macon has its linear parks. But uh, anyway, as they were laying it out, a farmer with a load of cotton on his wagon headed towards the river to market it downstream um, rode right through the, the, the uh, stakes that the engineers had laid out. And the engineers simply uh, wove the uh, angled road into the layout of Macon, Georgia. And in a lot of ways, um, it serves as that metaphor, as I said. Macon's history cannot be told in neat square blocks. There's so many things that happen here. Uh, it really relates to our past, our present, and our future. Where this park is, that's the old Cotton Avenue, the old dusty road where cotton was taken to the river. And this park is named after Rosa Parks. Now I'd like to take you on uh, a view of some important places in Macon of, of history note. Um, one is to the, uh, the home of uh, Widow Bond and uh, up on top of Coleman Hill and you can see a panorama of Macon and also to Rose Hill Cemetery, a beautiful cemetery where a lot of things and people come together. This is Cotton Avenue. This is the old Federal Road. It's an interesting history. Uh, this was the Lower Creek Trading Path and uh, running along the fall line between the Piedmont Plateau and the Coastal Plain. And in 1803-1804 when Louisiana was purchased, uh, President Thomas Jefferson asked Benjamin Hawkins, the Indian agent, said we need a good road to go down to New Orleans. The Natchez traces uh, through Tennessee, through the mountains is kind of strange and difficult and um, robbers and all that sort of stuff. So Benjamin Hawkins said, well, there's the Lower Creek Trading Path. So they built that old road. It's a six foot wide road and uh, one of the first federal projects, matter of fact, they didn't have money. They couldn't, you know, there was no laws that said that the federal government could build roads, but they said, well, we're going to put the post office on it. And I mean, the, the, you know, it was a postal road. The, we'd use it for postal things. So anyway, um, they built the road and, and 20 years later, uh, with a series of treaties, um, Macon was founded in 1823. One of the important churches here in Macon uh, is the Presbyterian Church and uh, it was built in 1858. They had two previous churches, uh, but that was built in 1858. Sidney Lanier played the organ there and his flute. Sidney Lanier, who was uh, a young uh, Confederate uh, private in the war, and he t also talks about the war from a completely different perspective. Uh, Sidney Lanier was captured and put in a prison point lookout uh, uh, and, and actually contracted tuberculosis there. Very, very difficult times. Uh, but he wrote some of the most beautiful poetry, the most inspiring poetry that was ever written. Uh, he's a real uh, Southern uh, poet, uh, literary giant. He died at 39 years old. We're headed up towards the Coleman Hill, that antebellum house over there on the right. We're at the Cow's Bond House. It's an it's a antebellum home that was built by a railroad magnet. One of the first railroads built in Georgia, uh, or the first, was between Macon and Forsyth. And they would send cotton down on, and this is in the late 1830s. And, um, and, and Cow's built, the, uh, built this house. Uh, and later sold it to uh, Joseph Bond, the largest slaveholder in Georgia. Owned thousands of acres and hundreds of slaves. Um, wealth and cotton uh, went hand in hand. Um, about 20% of Southerners had slaves and they were, um, it was a very efficient and a lot of wealth was involved in, in the raising of cotton. And, as you can see, uh, this kind of house was built. Now, most houses weren't like this, of course, 
but the ones that did make a lot of money, it was pretty significant. Uh, what's also interesting about this house, it's, it, it sits on the top of this hill and you can see the rest of all of Macon. When Macon was finally captured or actually surrendered, the war was actually already over in 1865, April of 1865. Joseph Bond, who was the owner of this house, actually was killed before the war. Um, a, one of his overseers had abused a slave and he was chastising the, uh, the overseer and the overseer pulled out a pistol and killed the fellow that owned this house, Joseph Bond. So, but after, as the war came, came to an end and federal occupation of Macon, um, this, this uh, house was requisitioned by uh, the general, uh, General James Harrison Wilson, who was federal general that captured Macon. He chose this house for his residence and Widow Bond was forced to move out. So we're heading up towards um, College Street, which College Street goes down towards the river and uh, down at the river <clears throat> is Rose Hill Cemetery, which is where we're heading. Built in 1840, but it's actually named after um, the fellow that laid it out, and his name was Simry Rose. He was a newspaper editor here in Macon. And um, it was modeled after um, cemeteries in the Northeast <clears throat> where he had uh, come from. One of the most beautiful spots in all of Macon was turned into a cemetery. Back, back in those days, in, in the early part of the 19th century, um, cemeteries were parks. Matter of fact, the Almond Brothers love to spend time in Rose Hill. Some of their songs come from characters that they found here in Rose Hill. Right, right around this corner right here is Martha. Uh, little Martha, one of the songs, you can see it right there. See Little Martha on the, on the top of that tombstone? That was uh, one of the songs. And they talked, a, played songs a lot about the, uh, the, uh, the railroad and getting on the railroad and leaving and all that. Well, the railroad runs right next to uh, Rose Hill here. And of course, when uh, Dwayne Allman and Barry Oakley, members of the band, unfortunately died in motorcycle wrecks here in Macon, uh, they were also buried here. One of the interesting stories that has a current nature to it is the story of the Tracy family here in Macon, Georgia. Uh, Edward Dorr Tracy Jr., uh, who's replicated on this monument sign here, talks about his life. He was killed at Vicksburg. He was a brigadier general and is buried here in uh, Rose Hill. Uh, his father was the second mayor of uh, Macon in 1825 and actually hosted General Lafayette when he came through Macon uh, at about that same time, 1825. But the Tracy family was originally from New York and Edward Dorr Tracy Jr. had a brother by the name of Philemon Tracy. And Philemon was a major in the Army, uh, uh, Confederate Army and fighting with General Lee up in Virginia. At the Battle of Sharpsburg, he was killed. And uh, even though the uh, Confederate Army won the day, uh, they had to uh, retreat across the river and uh, the Union Army uh, had the field. Well. The Tracy family from Batavia, New York, heard about the battle and heard about Philemon being killed. So uh, Francis uh, Tracy, the cousin of Philemon, came down, found the body, dressed him up like a Confeder uh, as a federal officer, and transported his body back to Batavia, uh, New York, and there buried him very quietly because, because, of course, during the middle of this war, there was a lot of hostile hostility on both sides about the enemy. Um, what's interesting in, in the contemporary nature of this story was there was a comment in the Batavia newspaper recently that commented on there being a Confederate officer there in the Batavia Cemetery and somebody had a Confederate, small Confederate flag and there all of a sudden uh, there was a brouhaha about uh, a Confederate officer being buried there in uh, in Batavia, and some say he's the only officer, a Confederate officer, uh, buried uh, above the Mason-Dixon line. But it's interesting that uh, all of a sudden this thing that happened 150 years ago 
um, would engender such uh, discussion and debate and research. It was a fascinating time, a, a very difficult time. Uh, 620,000 uh, men were killed uh, in that, in the most vicious, uh, one of the worst uh, conflagrations that had ever happened in this country. You could almost add up all the other wars combined and that killed more American men than any other time. But it is a very important uh, time of our history. We can learn a lot about it by studying it and we can learn a lot about ourselves.